virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and the five were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil and their lamp, with their lamps. <coughs> as the bridegroom were, was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight they were, there was a cry. Here it is. Oh. Okay. We go back. Steve. 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 If you speak louder, you can't hear it. Steve. What do you want him to do? Go back. Go back one, Steve. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all the vir those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. Next. Next. <laughs> and the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor hour, nor the hour. Then exit. Oh, it's the word of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. I'm gonna speak in the mic, but uh, it's uh, good seeing y'all this morning. Um, I just wanna pray before we, we start, and let's, uh, let's just pray. Lord God, we just thank you for this awesome day, God, to just be in your presence. And God, we just wanna wait on you. Would you minister to our hearts this morning? Would you help us to slow down um, in light of our busy schedules, God? And God, would, we, would you just give us um, just the opportunity to commune with you, to just be with you, to know your heart, God? And so God, will you come fill us today? We pray, Holy Spirit, will you speak to just our lives would you speak to what it means to be a follower of Christ? What it means to walk um, out our faith in you, Jesus. And we just pray that, God, um, you would just be our love, God. Our, our, our love, God. Our commitment, our hope. And we just praise you, Lord. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today, um, before I, I just get into the verse, man, um, it's good seeing all of y'all. I'm a little bit crazy out right now, retreat and everything. My heart's like bumping like crazy, right? So I'm like, whoa. But um, it's good to just be in the fellowship of believers, in, in the house of the Lord with all of us that just, just love God. And, and so, um, yeah, I just want to start. Um, how many of you guys know the movie American Sniper? Woo! <laughs> right? Uh, I hear it's a really good movie. Um, I ended up just watching maybe like the first 30 minutes and then falling asleep in the, you know, the movie theater. But yeah, it was really awesome, right? And um, I think it's really cool because, you know, I bring that movie up because I think that movie, it really, the, the part that I saw, it really gives a picture of this aspect of what Navy SEALs go through, right? Like, they're, they're doing the training, and there, there's this bell thing, they're like, ding, ding, right? Like, and if they ring the bell, they get, like, kicked out of camp. But these guys are working, and they're, like, jacked. They're all jacked. But they're, like, in the water together, freezing to death, right? They're, in, they're like, swimming. They're, like, lifting stuff and doing push-ups and, you know, getting yelled at by their instructor, right? And I'm, I'm sitting there, like, wow, this is insane. It's, it's easy to watch it on TV. But could I imagine it if I was doing that in real life? What would push me? What, would, what pushes these guys? You know what I'm saying? What pushes these guys? That they would just destroy their bodies, right? Destroy their minds, get, get put down to the ground. And what pushes them? And I realized what really pushes them is an anticipation. An anticipation for something. I'll say it again. What pushes them is the anticipation for something, right? These guys put their bodies on the line not to just, not just to do it, but they do it for something. 
They do it for a reason. And at the end of the day, they either want the name, I'm a Navy SEAL, I'm the best there is, right? I'm the, I'm the strongest in the, in the whole military. They either want that honor, or they either want to be so trained that when they go to battle, that they are ready. When they're so trained, and they're so like ready for war, that no one can mess with them. That's why they do the things that they do. They, they anticipate for something, a goal that they are striving for. Today, as we look at scripture, and I'm going to read the scripture for us again. But I, I, Jesus is getting at an issue here amongst the Jewish people. Jesus is talking to the Jewish people about um, this coming, this, this groom who is coming. And for them, Jesus was coming. Jesus was the Messiah, the next truth. And a lot of them knew the scriptures and the Bibles and the prophecies. They knew all these things, but they didn't see and know Jesus. And today we're going we're gonna to wrap up on some of that, but we're going to also wrap up on our lives. What does it mean to be in a place of anticipation for the Lord Jesus in our lives? And how does that look as Christians? How does that look as kingdom followers? I'm going to read the verse for you. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lambs and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, five of them were wise. For the foolish took their lamps, and they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a cry. Here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. But then all those virgins rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answer saying, Since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourself. And while they were going to buy, the, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, other versions, afterward the other versions came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, Truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch. Therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour. As we read this uh, parable about the wedding feast, I really want to break down some of this background for you, right? Um, how many of you guys know the proper ceremony? Oh, I'm going to try to come back, right? I'm like walking around and go stop. Um, how many of you guys know the proper ceremony for uh, a wedding in our time today? Well, what usually goes down? Anyone? Enlighten us. Anyone enlighten us? Paul, what usually happens first? Before you marry someone. Oh, before you marry someone? Yeah. Do you propose? Already? Oh. You don't even know the girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. date. You date. And you get to know them. You say, hey, what's up? You know, let's chill out. Whatever, right? You date. And then after you date, what then happens? You know, all the flowers, Valentine's Day was just, uh, you know, candy, whatever. It's all good, right? And then all of a sudden, we get to that place where then... Cheech? You propose. Before you propose, you probably should talk to their parents, right? And, and make sure you get the blessing and everything. You talk to parents, get the blessing, right? Propose, and then get married, and that, there's, that, that, there's this whole ceremony and procession. And today, I want to bring you into the ceremony and procession of what Jesus is talking about in this parable. It's beautiful, right? In the text, what ends up happening is, usually how the age range is not like our age range today. It's not like, oh, I'm 21 and he's 22. That was great, right? But back in the day, it was more like, I'm 30 and you're 16. And we're going to have, it's the culture, okay? It's their culture, okay? So what ends up happening, they go to flower festival. Girl is like shaking her tambourine, like trying to attract these guys. Guys are like, oh man, she's fly, right? I want to I wanna, I wanna date her. But it's not like dating. Because once they're like, oh, man, that girl is really cute. He goes to the father, and they write up a contract. And he's like, I really want to marry your daughter. He's like, okay, what are you going to give me? There's a bride price. So what he says is, man, she is incredible. And so I'm going to give her 2,000 camels. I'm going to give her dates, like the, the food, right? And I'm going to, I'm going to give her because she's awesome. I mean, yeah. And then, so there's all these economic and social obligations where they deal, right? And so if the father says yes, you know what happens? The, 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 the guy who likes the girl, 
in, in his social obligation, he says, I'm going to prepare a house. And I'm going to make this house, and it's going to take me a long time, but I'm going to prepare this house so that when I come back, I'm taking my wife and we're going to be living in that house. It's very interesting because in John 2, I believe, they talk, they talk about the house. Jesus talks about, I'm coming back. I'm bringing you to my house, right? It's very marriage language up in that piece, right? So cool. Um, but you know what? How long it takes? It's like it takes like 12 months. They say at least 12 months. It could take years and years and years. And oh my goodness, like if you really love her, it's gonna take forever. You're gonna build this giant mansion, right? And, and I'm setting you up for this this part. This is beautiful. So this guy's working. This guy's like, I love this girl. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do whatever. He comes back into the town at night, and it's on, right? Because. What these maids are doing, what these virgins are doing, they are waiting for this bride to come. He, they know he's coming. They know he's coming because in that first part of the scripture, they say, um, he says, and uh, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took a lamb and went to meet the bridegroom. They're ready for the bridegroom. They're ready for the situation. And what ends up happening is this. Um, he comes in and the whole community the whole community rallies around them. They are pumped. They're like, yeah, wedding festival, wedding time. I mean, we're part of this, this whole thing because it's a, such a community-oriented thing. And so they walk in. But it happens at night, and this is where the maids come in. You see, they're waiting for this big feast that they're going to go to, this big marriage celebration where the bride seals the deal. And, and Jesus is using this parable to show just situations of how people are. One is the wise ones, they, they bring oil. And, and the other ones, they just bring a lamp. And, and, and Steve, can you pull, put up a lamp up there, yo? Oh, yeah, snap, right? We go, we go. Thank you, Steve. You are the man, right? Um, this is a Herodian lamp. This is the lamp that they're talking about. This joint will, like, fit on your hand, right? If you fill it up with oil, it's two to three hours of light. And so I want to get into this concept. See, what I want to get into today is as, as we look at the scriptures, one group is prepared for this bride group. One, and one group is not prepared for the bride group. The foolish, uh, they, they don't take any oil. And their goal is to meet the bride group. Their goal was to celebrate with the bride group, and yet they missed the opportunity. And my question is why? Why did they miss the opportunity? As we look at the text, they're ill-prepared, as a lot of you thought in your minds. But the whole concept of the oil, not staying committed to what the bridegroom was doing, even in delay. See, their perception, the, the women that are foolish, their perception is they're, they're half-hearted. They're not committed. These, these Herodian lamps that you see, they only give two or three hours of life. And they know this, this, bride is co this bridegroom is coming. Right? They don't know what time, what hour, but they know he's coming. And, and, and so this, this concept of not having enough, they weren't even preparing for it. They're just kind of like, okay, yeah, I guess if he doesn't come in the first half, he's probably not going to come. You see that aspect that they weren't even prepared for the delay. Yeah, they knew about it, just like the Jews. They knew about Jesus coming, but they weren't open to it. They weren't open to sing. They, open, they weren't ready for it. Verse 8 through 12 also says this, And the foolish said to the wives, Give me some oil. Y'all, let me bump some oil, man. Right? Jimmy, you have a lot of oil. Give me some oil, man. Right? For the lamps going out. But the wise answer saying, Since there will be not enough for us, go to the dealers. So they go to the dealers. But it's too late by then. They're shut out. Parable's so, it's really deep, man. The Jews in this parable uh, were an important part because of the Messiah. But my question as we look in today's community, this is a shocking and resounding question that I want to speak to all of us today. In our daily lives, are we committed to what God wants us to do? Are we committed and open to seeing what God wants us to do in our lives? Are we anticipating the Lord Jesus Christ? Or is that an afterthought in our response to loving God and knowing God and living for the Bible? I, I think in my heart, when I really look at this passage, man, it gripped me. Because I was like, I don't really anticipate for the Lord. Even though that's a gospel thing. Where it's like, God, Jesus died and rose again for me. He, I'm saved, I'm free, but I'm not anticipating 
I'm not waiting for the Lord. I'm not, I'm not cherishing those moments where I'm like, God, I, I know I won't be with you yet, but I, I want to go. I want to do. I want to just be with you, God. In our day-to-day, -day, are we preparing for the kingdom of God each day for Christ's coming? Um, because he's coming back. It's, it's, it's kind of funny. It's like this. I, I picture it like this. Uh, this week, man, I really miss my roommates a lot. Right? I really did. Um, I had, like, random sleepovers. Just telling you, Pastor Jim, right? But uh, <laughs> I had random sleepovers with some of the guys, and they chilled out. But in my heart, I was like, man, it's kind of empty, you know? It's like, oh, man, you know, I miss PJ's cooking, you know, and, and all this stuff, <laughs> right? But, um, <laughs> but, but, no, just kidding. But, like, what ended up happening was, like, at first, I was like, okay, I want to clean this house because I want, I don't want them to come in and, like, they're like, what dirty roommate, horrible person, you know, like, I, I'm like, in my heart, there was, like, this desire. But at first, that desire was like, man, I got time. Man, Monday it's okay. Take a sleepover. They mess up everything, right? I'm cleaning up, right? And like Paul was like eating pieces like crazy, right? Like pizza, like cups everywhere. Like okay, you know, like alright, whatever, right? But anyways, it's like in my heart, I'm like, oh, you know. But it started as as I knew that they were coming back. There was an anticipation. It's like, man, I want to honor them. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'm like, I can't make it because I'm going to ATS. So let me plan this out to try to clean the kitchen a little bit. I still got a little bit of cleaning to do, right? But. There was that anticipation and heart because I was like, man, I want my friends to just be honored. I want them to be loved, right? I want them to feel like they don't, they can trust me with some of the house. That I inverted that or something, right? But that, I think that's how we need to re resolve how we look at Jesus sometimes. Sometimes Jesus saved us from our sins and all this stuff, and then we just live our lives and say, Jesus, thank you. <laughs> but really, it's what Jesus has done for us that it should resonate in our heart where we're like, I'm anticipating for you, God. You're coming back, so I'm not going to take a day off. You're coming back, so I don't want to take a day off. I don't want to do those things anymore that I've been struggling with instead. I don't want to, I just want to be with you, God. I'm anticipating the day because you're for real. And that should be something that resonates in our hearts. That's something that we, we need to come alive with. We need to start preparing. We need to start understanding that, yeah, we need to ask God if we don't have that feeling in our heart for that. That's something I've been praying for. Lord, I don't have a heart for certain things that you have a heart for. Will you prepare me in those areas? Sometimes I don't have a heart for missions. Lord, give me a heart for missions. Sometimes I don't have these things that I'm preparing for your kingdom. I just don't have it. I care more about, you know, Facebook or my video games or, or, or this, God. All our goals and ambitions need to be oriented back to Christ. Everything that Jesus has done for us, we need to be remembered. And, and we need to give that and say, God, I want to be ready. Not like these women who forgot their oil. Not like these women who are half-hearted and say, you know what? It's okay. No oil. I, I, I don't, he, if he doesn't come in that first two, three hours, then he's not going to come at all. No. We need to stay committed. We need to stay committed in our faith. We need to stay committed in our relationship with God. We need to stay committed to the things that he is calling us as the body in our ministries, whether you're a teacher, a comedian, that he is calling you guys into. Stay committed. Be awake. Be alive. Know who you are in Christ. My second thing I want to get at is this. So what, what I just want to reemphasize is we're not preparing for what God wants to do in this time on earth with our lives. We need to be watchful because Jesus is coming back. The second point I want to make, and that's my last point, so it's almost done, right? In preparation for Jesus, as we prepare for Jesus, we get to know him deeply. In verse 9 through 13, it reads this. I'm going to read it for you. i got to like scroll back up. Uh, but the wise answer saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealer and buy for yourself. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, truly, I say, I don't know you. And then the, the indictment. Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day or the hour. Wow. 
Um, as you see, the, the groom, they, they get to the door, they get in late. It's a dishonor to roll up like that. And they're knocking on the door, and the groom is saying, uh, the groom is saying, uh, I don't know you. I don't know you. And, and the two words, the gr Greek word for no is ido, which is to be aware, to consider, in seeing, understanding that person. And I love the Hebrew word. I used this before, yada, to know intimately, to know them personally, to know them right here. Not just, to, not just oh, Cheech, I know you, but no, I Cheech, I know your life. I've, I've been with you. I've been in relationship with you. I know you intimately. In preparing of the coming Jesus and living the kingdom mindset, it helps us to know Jesus. Um, what, I, what I want to get at is this. Pretty much what I'm trying to say is, at the end of the day, as we prepare, preparing is an aspect of knowing God. Preparing is an aspect of knowing God. There's times where I will give a presentation in class, and I love presentations, right? But I kind of want to honor my teacher. I have this mindset, I want to honor my teacher, so I want to bring it, right? And so there, there's this aspect where I'm like studying. Like I have this teacher who's going to be speaking at the Hosanna conference. His name is uh, Stanley John. He's a really cool dude. But I really want to like impress him and, and, and stuff like that. So I'm like studying. I'm putting up cool PowerPoint pictures. I'm like, yeah, right? I got the sound effects in the back. Like, right? And, 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 you know, it's like, it's just like you just want to do the best that you can. So that you can please this teacher, so that you can impress him. But on top of that, you can talk to him and know him and get to know him in relationship. You know what I'm saying? And, and I think that's, that's an aspect that we have to see as we prepare for God. This type of mentality, this type of lifestyle that Jesus is talking about, when we are anticipating Jesus, when we are ready for Jesus, and or we give our lives to Jesus and say, God, I'm, I want to be ready. I want to be watchful. That's when we know God the best. I see it in relationships. Sometimes I'm lethargic to my brother. And I'm like, yo, let's chill out. Okay. Two weeks later, yo, let's chill out. Okay. But if there's no effort or, 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 or time with God, if there's no place in the secret place with God, if there's no place in, in, in following out the commands of God, then we, don't, we aren't really knowing God. We aren't really knowing his heart. If we're not praying for those things that he's calling us to pray for North Korea or for people, we don't really get to see a glimpse of his heart. And I'm not trying to work off of works. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying God wants us to be intimate with him. God wants us to know him. God wants to prepare in that sense with him. To know him intimately in our lives. That, you know, when, when all things fail in our lives, that are... Our attitudes for God is like, God, I lost my Samsung S5 Galaxy in Israel. But it's like $600. But you know what, God? It's okay. Because my life is not oriented around that. But it's oriented around what you're doing. I want to encourage you guys, brothers and sisters, because I think we've lost this aspect of anticipation in our hearts. We're not happy that Jesus is coming back. We're not fired up that he's going to set the captives free. We're not fired up that he's going to heal people's lives. We're not fired up that he's going to make things right. We're not fired up that he's going to be the God that he is. And we put him in a corner and we worry about our lives. My kingdoms. Just to sum it up, in light of preparing for the kingdom, uh, coming of Jesus, we get to know Jesus more. Get to know Jesus more, church. Prepare your hearts with him. Prepare your lives with him. Every day, spend time with him. I want to give you some applications before we leave. It's very simple today. It's very simple. We need to be prepared. Part of dullness with God. How many of you guys feel dullness sometimes in your relationship with God? Part of that dullness, part of that life we live where we get lethargic is because we're not communicating with God. You know, when, when I go to school sometimes... I'm learning about Jesus, which is so funny. But I'm not spending time with God that I know Jesus. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? I'm learning all the seminary education about Jesus and, you know, all these crazy words, hermeneutics, or, you know, like, blah, 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 right? But in my heart, my heart is dying, and it's like, you're not communicating with God. You don't know what's going in and on in his heart and what he cries out for and what he desires for your life. Dude. And I'm like, snap. I need to sit back. 
Some of you guys need to sit back with God and communicate with God today. It's like, it's, it, I'll give you an example. It's like being prepared is really committing one's life in the secret place with God. And, and I have an a, a awesome, beautiful sister-in-law. She's awesome. And she told me about, she ran the like New York Marathon and stuff. And there's like all these nasty stories I'll tell you later about it, right? But it's like sometimes we want this God experience with God, but we're not willing to just train. And I don't want to use the word train as in like a work thing, but to really just sit with God and learn step by step and learn from Him and, and just spend time with Him. We're not willing to, we want to do the 26 mile run, but we're at one minute run, you know, we're at a one hour run where we're like huffing and puffing. We need to spend time with God. That's how we prepare. That's how we know his heart, what he's doing. The second thing is anticipation. Anticipation. Our actions dictate our theologies. I'm going to give uh, this illustration. This is my friend, Jimmy Kwan, right? Like, let's say if you believe that Jimmy Kwan is the Michael Jordan of guitar playing, right? Michael Jordan of guitar playing. And, and your actions... Like, your actions will, if you really believe that Jimmy Kwan's that the, the Michael Jordan guitar playing, your actions will follow. You'll be like, I'm going to make a shrine with Jimmy Kwan. Oh, man, I want an autograph of Jimmy Kwan on my guitar. Oh, man, like, yo, know, Jimmy is the best, right? You would say compliments. Your actions would dictate what you believe. Well, let me ask you a question. You believe in Jesus Christ. What does your actions say about what, what you believe in Christ? Is, is, is your action, does your uh, actions dictate your the theology of what you believe? I want to challenge you, not out of our works, but because we love Jesus, you know what I'm saying? Not out of our works, but because we love Jesus. I want to, I want to give you one last thing, and it says this. Sometimes we're so caught up with our worldly aspirations and our ambitions and getting that raise and getting that promotion and getting that status and getting that boyfriend and girlfriend that we're wasting time, yo. It's like, it's like you got a test and you're on Facebook for five hours and then you're like, oh man, only have an hour of study. Like, are you kidding me? Why we spend five hours on Facebook? There's a lot of things where we're Facebooking things. We're on Facebook, and, and, and I'm attributing to Facebook because that's what I really think. It's useless sometimes. Some of the things that we're holding on to and, and working through, it, it's useless. Well, we gotta, we gotta get our, we gotta get our orientation straight. We gotta get our, we gotta get our mindset, our priorities straight on who Jesus has called us. If we're waiting for the Most High King, if we want to usher Him in, if we want to just be part of His kingdom, then what is our priority? Is it to play? Is I'm not, I'm not downing, you know, entertainment and stuff like that. But if, if that is the passion of your heart to bring in the kingdom of God, to know Jesus, to let everyone see Jesus, what are, what is our life? oriented towards? Is it towards the works and the, the time with God, or is it towards just doing our thing? I want to challenge you guys. I love you guys. Man, I love this church. This is an awesome church, right? But let's pray about that. The only one who can convict our hearts is Jesus Christ. Amen? The Holy Spirit, can, can only one can convict us. So if that's something we struggle with, let us pray today. We're going to pray for that. Let us pray hard for that. Because we gotta, we gotta be ready, guys. We gotta be ready. Let's pray. respond to God today. You know, to thank Him for what He's done in your life. This gospel that we, we have. This good news. But if there's things on your heart where it's like, God, I don't love that. I don't love the things that you love, God. 
I'm not prepared. Let God know. Lord, we give you praise. We just want to submit to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. 